YouTubers, this is Mr. Mega Man Fan, and I have a Fan Gamer package here. Something that I pre ordered a while ago, and it has just arrived. This is Series 2 of the Undertale action figures on Mr. Mega Man Fan. As always, thank you to my subscribers. If you're not one of them, please feel free to hit that subscribe link, follow along with my gaming and collectible adventures such as this lovely series 2 undertale box let's take a look at the back first we have metaton alfie's undyne flowey and tammy here's the side with the soul of your character i believe it's also the same on the other side and last but not least, here's the front with all five characters. But we're not going to stop there. I'm going to actually open this box and take them out. Oh! And they put the dog under the flap. How cute is that? I don't remember if they did that with the Series 1. They probably did. Should have seen that coming. It makes me hear the dog music in my head. da 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 as you can see there are bases for all of the figures and a little plastic shell covering them and since I don't want to attach everybody to the base right now this is as good as it's going to get you're going to see all the different poses for Flowey he's got a changeable face so you can put any of these on to give him creepier expressions Temmy in the Tem shop. Tem go to college. Make make you proud. Yes. And my personal favorite, the fierce and unstoppable Undyne, complete with a spear in hand. And some would say I'm Alfie's because she is such an otaku nerd, and I guess I won't reject that comparison. But oh yes. Metaton, complete with a switch on the back. You know what? They're going to have to make a Series 3 so we can see how Metaton looks when you flip the switch. That's the only thing missing from this set. So, I am Mr. Mega Man Fan. This is Undertale Series 2, available from Fangamer.com. What's up gamers, YouTubers, Amiibros, Amigals, and all others out there? This is Mr. Mega Man Fan. First of all, I want to say thank you. If you watched either of my live streams over the weekend, I didn't announce them or do any preparation ahead of time to let people know about them. I had a friend come to town on somewhat short notice, so I just decided while he was here we were going to do some gaming. So I threw up a stream of us playing Atari Flashback Volume 2 which I will break into smaller chapters later because it's about an hour long, so I'll divvy that up into more digestible chunks for all of you. And then we were having a really epic run of Pac-Man 256 on PS4, so when we hit a rather large high score, I decided to turn on the stream and keep it going for as long as we could keep going. So that's why that happened. And if you watched either or both, thank you. And what you're watching right now is me unboxing a Pixel Pals, which is a GameStop. Well, maybe other stores have it, but it was available at GameStop. And what it is, is a, uh, a light-up 8-bit Mega Man. They also have a Mario and a Vault Boy. I'm trying to get this out of the box without destroying the box, but... You know me, I'm Mr. Mega Man fan, so I bought two of them, one to keep in the box and one to take out. So, there. Now it's properly out of the box. Removed from the plastic. And it comes with batteries, so I can actually show off what it looks like in this episode and not leave you all hanging. That's pretty nice. Most of the time... When you buy stuff like this, it's batteries not included. In fact, that was kind of the MO for toys when I was a kid was batteries not included. 
that was pretty much the truth for just about everything. By the way, quick look at the battery cover there with the Mega Man First Edition and Capcom and PDP logos on it. PDP is the manufacturer in this case. As you can see, two slots for batteries there. I hate when things unexpectedly happen like that while you're trying to make a nice video for all the YouTubers out there. So hopefully this will be bright enough that you can really see what it looks like when I hit the switch. Yeah, check that out. Pixel Pals. Man, this thing rocks. Now I'm tempted to unbox the other one, even though I was going to keep one in the box. This looks too cool. Putting a pair of these on my shelf and turning off the lights, just seeing them glow in the game room, that would be sweet. Pixel Pals. Well, folks, the two big boxes you see sitting right here in front of me are from Microsoft. And without further ado, because I don't really know what else to say, I'm going to go ahead and start opening things. We're going to take a look at what they just sent me. Robot White. And this would be a new Xbox controller. The hybrid D-pad, refined yet familiar input. Share button, capture and share content seamlessly. Wireless and Bluetooth, textured grip. Compatible with Series X, Xbox One, Windows 10, Android, and even iOS. Oh, this can do a lot of things. But what did I get it for? Why did I get it? Well, it was part of a bundle. And now you're going to see the rest of that bundle come to life. Voila! Hopefully you can see that. If not, I'll take it out and we can get even a better look at it. from Microsoft. This is the Series X. Let me get that in the camera just a little bit more. You can see the one terabyte 4K Xbox Series X. Not the Series S, that's the all digital, but the Series X. Now let's see how hard it's going to be to get inside of it to the actual system. Power your dreams. Well, that might be overstating it a little bit, but I hope it entertains me somewhat. There's a little box and a much bigger box, which would be the Series X itself. Oh no, that opens like a uh, clamshell. Interesting box design. Just set this down for the moment. See what we have in the smaller box here. Probably cables and cords and such. Yeah, that would appear to be the case. Power cord. HDMI cord. Sorry if that wasn't in focus. And another controller. So I'll have a pair of controllers to use with this thing. One black and one white. Here's the one that comes bundled with. And it did include batteries for it. Again, sorry if that wasn't in focus, but batteries, it's always helpful. Yes, that just goes to show it's not rechargeable. 
and a product regulatory guide limited warranty and agreement so I want you to know what you're kicking into is that all yeah I think that's everything look at that Woo. I haven't even played it and I already like it. Wow. That is something to behold. It is, it is cool. Got the media bay here, the USB port here, the vent at the top. You see it has to put out a lot of air to stay cool. On the back, you got internet, and storage expansion, HDMI out, power, two more USB ports. What's this tiny little one here? Uh, can't tell what this little one in the middle does yeah we have a series x in all its glory so the only thing left to do now is plug it in well in theory i'm just about ready to go but the tv decided it was time to install an update so now i'm just waiting it out but I've got batteries in the controller I've got the Series X plugged into the back of the TV power cord and HDMI cord so as soon as this is done downloading whatever TV update it needed I'll push the button Frank oh restart now please do that Okay, now it actually has to install the update. I thought maybe it was downloading it and installing it, but no, it's doing that separately. But at least it appears to be going pretty fast here. 30, 50, is it going to jump to 70 or 80 next? Yep, 80. So one more, and it should be done. Who knew I would have to update my TV just to play my Series X? Upgrade successful. Well, hooray. Now I have to make sure we're on the right input. That lets me do that. I believe it's HDMI 1, but it might be HDMI 2, so I might have to switch it once I turn on the Xbox. Probably on AV right now. Yep. All right. Let's uh, let's go with HDMI one and see if I put it in that one or if I put it in the other. Well, that's a reassuring noise. Oh, it's on HDMI two. Okay. Okay, well, I guess that means I got to stop filming for a second because I need the phone to do that. Well, allegedly I'm signed in and it's done downloading updates, so now we just need to turn on the controller and see what happens next. Love for a buck. Mm -hmm. 
Come on, I'm gonna have to make a decision right away. Uh, let's just go with no for now. Avatars, YouTube, HBO, Prime, Paramount, Pluto. Not games though. I do admit I was a little unsure about the whole hybrid disc and D-pad, but so far I like it quite a bit, and it's comfortable to hold. I am not feeling any heaviness in my hands or fatigue from the buttons, so I think we're on the right track here. You know, that reminds me, I've got my uh, Xbox external hard drive with a bunch of games on it. I should uh, see if it'll let me connect that. I don't know if it'll make me restart it to detect it or not, but hey, it's worth a shot, right? It's the one I was using on my Xbox One, so it ought to be Hunky Dory with the Xbox Series X, and it is an official Microsoft external hard drive. It's not a third party one, it's got the Xbox branding on it and everything. Made by Steam. Bring it on over. There you can see what I'm talking about. It's an official Xbox external hard drive. Only one way to know if it's gonna play ball, and that's to try plugging it in. Oh, well, lit up. That's a good sign. Ah, external storage. That looks more like Maple Update Chicken. Yeah, that's that's more like my library of games. Hello. That's a lot more like it. Woo! Alright, let's just uh, pick something. I imagine a lot of these are going to make me grab the disc. What can I play with it? will be on the hard drive itself. How do I even tell which ones are fully installed? 
for the hard drive. Good question. I guess. Just have to wing it. Let's try. Oh, yeah, it's asking for the disc. You have the game disc, insert it now. Well, that's one way to make sure the drive works. Right? Okay. Be right back. pretty, isn't it? I am a fan of Master Chief in a steel book. I like how that looks. Hold to open. Does that mean it's going to let me play it right away? Oh, no. Nope. Installation started. That's kind of what I expected. We're installing a whole lot of Halo stuff. not too bad. That one's 113. This one's only 15. Oh, no, it went up. Now it's 25 off the disk and 22 off the network. So it's going to be a while. But I think I can say my Xbox Series X is working well. The controller feels nice. Xbox One games are working. Series X clearly is going to install, so I'm not worried about that either. And since backward compatibility is still a thing, it should work with any 360 and Xbox games that I own that are supported, so I'm pretty stoked right now. I know the Series X has been around for a couple of years, but it wasn't until the last week of February that I was finally able to get a hold of one. I never thought the PlayStation 5 would actually be easier to get than an Xbox Series X, but that proved to be the case because I got my PS5 through Walmart and I had to get the Xbox directly from Microsoft because I couldn't get it from any retailers. Not Best Buy, not Amazon, not Target, not the Furniture Mart. Nobody had the Series X online or in store and if you went in store it would say don't even ask we don't have it in the store just don't bother us i mean it wasn't that rude but it was to the effect of you're barking up the wrong tree if you're asking for it because you're just not going to have it 
In fact, uh, there was a time I was at Walmart not that long ago, and a guy was looking at Xbox games, and he said, do you have any of those new Xbox Series X's? And I had to stifle a laugh. I was like, no, dude, read the sign. And I just pointed. He's like, oh. Yeah, like, sorry, they... They don't even want you to ask. They just, they know that they don't have it in store. And if they did, it would walk out the door the moment they had it because that's how in demand they are. So, not in demand for me anymore because I finally have mine. But y'all probably don't want to sit here and wait 40 minutes while Halo Infinite installs. So, I have to do a part two on this video at a later date. But for now, Mr. Mega Man fan, Signing out. Hey Mega Maniacs, it's Mr. Mega Man Fan and I have another package here from Stone Age Gamer. It's made from 100% recycled Deku trees. I always hate cutting through these things because their packaging materials are so charming compared to everybody else. It almost feels like a shame to slice through them to get to the products, but I do want the products. It also says caution may cause Pac-Man fever. Well, I think any of you who know me have long since figured out that I have Pac-Man fever. I've been driven crazy and gone out of my mind by Pac-Man fever a long, long time ago. So let me see here if I can get this open. Maybe I didn't break the seal well enough there. Feels like it's hanging on. Ugh. Now it's starting to come apart. And it's full of peanuts. Isn't that everybody's favorite? Who doesn't love a whole pile of foam peanuts, huh? Well, now we gotta get through the bubble wrap to the main event. And, as you might suspect, given it's Stone Age Gamer, it's another EverDrive product. The Everdrive 64 from Stone Age Gamer and Crix. The SD card loads there. And there's a micro USB port there for development tools. And Crix certified and Stone Age Gamer on the back. So now I'll need to do some formatting, probably FAT32 of a micro SD and maybe some operating software and then after that i'll demonstrate this product so bear with me and i will be back in just a moment okay the micro sd card has been formatted to fat 32 and loaded with the games that came from stone age gamer plus a selection of games that i wanted to try out and see if they worked on the everdrive all starting with the letter m because i am mr Mega Man fan I was a little concerned about the brand of micro SD card that I used for this EverDrive because usually they recommend SanDisk or Samsung or some name brand. Well, this is a more generic brand sold by Walmart called ONN, which I guess would be pronounced ON. And I wanted to know if this would work with my EverDrive once I formatted it for FAT32. It came formatted XFAT, so I had to reformat it first, but it appears that it is going to work just fine because I'm using one of the five games that came with the purchase of the EverDrive, which is 40 Winks. This was a PlayStation game in the 1990s that was also being developed for Nintendo 64, but as I recall, it never saw the light of day on that platform, even though it basically got to... 80 to 100 percent completion and when it was rediscovered they finished it and pico interactive licensed it and released it and consequently stone age gamer licensed it for sale with their everdrive so there was a kickstarter for a while where you could get like a complete in box copy of 40 winks but i was always kind of thinking about the everdrive in the back of my mind going well you know what it comes with the everdrive so why do I need to back this on Kickstarter if I'm going to get a copy of the game anyway? I don't really need the box and the manual and all that because my goal when I was collecting Nintendo 64 was to have all of the retail or quasi-retail games. 
When I say that, I, I go quasi-retail because, hey, with stuff like Blockbuster, it was really rental games, and they don't, never really sold them, but eventually they were sold to consumers when Blockbuster stores shut down, so I guess you can say they were sold at retail, kind of. And of course, that's getting into really weird territory with variants of games that are not necessarily games that you can't otherwise play anyway. They just have extra features or extra unlockable characters. But I digress. Let me show you something other than 40 Winks here. And as previously mentioned, I have a folder with all of my Nintendo 64 backups. Yes, I do have a physical copy of each one of these games. So I'm going to load up Mega Man 64 because I'm Mr. Mega Man fan. So... What else would you expect? This is a game that deviates from the 2D platforming if you're familiar with the original Mega Man and Mega Man X series. It's a 3D adventure, got some RPG-ish elements. I think people prefer the Mega Man Legends version on PlayStation, but they did manage to cram this into a Nintendo 64 cart, and I do mean cram. They had to do a a lot of compression, and I think a few things got cut out in the process, but they did do it. They got it on here. And I'm happy that this is one of the Nintendo 64 games I own a complete in-box copy of. As a Mega Man collector, that you would expect. But I also want to try some other things on here, some games that would create save data. So let's try... Oh, I don't know... Mario Party, I think that would do the trick. So far, no issues with the performance of the ONN micro SD. I got 128 gigabyte one so that I could load up pretty much my entire Nintendo 64 library on it if I choose to. All 296 North American games, plus a few imports that I have here and there, like Mario Story, which is paper mario so i could just skip that and keep the north american version but i could also upload the japanese version to do what i talked about in the previous video where i mentioned that strider 7x kind of got me hooked on the differences between the japanese and the u.s versions in terms of i don't know basically speed running or maybe glitch hacking the game going out of bounds Almost a boundary break, as she says would say. So Now, I don't know if there's an in-game hook for resets, but I've just been using the reset button on my N64 since I'm sitting pretty close to it anyway. And you can see that it did indeed create a save file for the cartridge. So that function works as I would expect it to. And I also tried it with Mario Tennis. I started a tournament game and saved it. And it did indeed create... A save file for that as well so it will save your cartridge saves to the everdrive's micro sd card as though you were actually saving it to a physical cartridge there's basically nothing that i think the everdrive 64x7 can't do it even has a real-time clock inside so if you wanted to play animal forest the original version of animal crossing you could do that as well Anyway, I think that's enough talking about the EverDrive 64X7. I am fully satisfied with this product, and once again, Stone Age Gamer and Cricks have delivered, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mega Maniacs, Mr. Mega Man fan here, and I'm not happy right now. Apparently, Amazon thinks that a padded envelope is the best way to ship these things and it probably got kicked the way I'm kicking it right now because look at it I mean seriously look at it they are going to send me a free replacement and all I have to do is drop this one off at a participating store so I guess for the sake of Genesis does I'll still unbox it and test it honestly it just makes me angry every time I look at it I'm afraid it's going to actually ruin my experience trying this out for the first time. I'll get a nice one, I'm sure. Hopefully they'll use an actual box instead of a padded envelope. If they don't, 
then I'll have another one to return, but you know what? I still want to try it since I can pack it back up in the box for the return once I've tried it out, so might as well. Let me uh, put this in a camera stand here so I can use both hands. Oh, boy. I think I'm actually opening this from the bottom. Not that it matters in the condition it's in. Oh, boy. Let's see here. I think this will be one of the controllers. Looks nice. Won't be keeping this one, but there it is. That'll just be for testing purposes. This is another controller, so I'm not even gonna unwrap that one. This is probably the Genesis Mini itself. Okay. Here we go. I know that flap works, but I'm not even going to take that plastic off. It's got all the buttons and accoutrements that you would expect. HDMI cord. Instruction book, which I also won't open. And power cable. And power block. Okay. And one very defective looking box. Well, that's good. At least we have a working unit. I like the menu music. I gotta say, the uh, input is very jumpy on this. You have to very, very carefully and deliberately select. Well, People have been saying that Sonic 2's rings have a sound lag of about 11 milliseconds, so let's try Sonic and see if I notice. Hmm. Honestly, doesn't seem that bad. I'm not noticing any input lag. I don't see any reason to complain about the audio. Maybe 11 milliseconds just isn't enough to notice. Or maybe if I was playing this on an actual Genesis, I'd feel differently. And it doesn't seem as touchy now that I'm actually playing a game compared to when I was in the menu screen, so maybe that has more to do with the menu than the controller. Let's try a few other things. Okay, let's see. Wily Wars.
first time this has ever officially been released outside of the Sega Channel and the cable modem, at least in North America. It did get a PAL release in Europe. It did get a Japan release, as Rockman Wars, of course. But first time officially that it's come out in the United States. See if there's any input lag here, shall we? If there is, I'm not noticing it. I think I'm doing better this time than the last time I played it on a real Genesis. Yeah, I would say I am. The more I use this controller, the more I like it. so used to the sounds of the real Mega Man 1. Well, it's not that this isn't real, it's just... You know what I mean when I say real. The original Nintendo version, the, the sound effects and the graphics, they just... they seem just a little off. I realize it's partially because it's on 16-bit and partially because they redesigned the look, but it just doesn't quite feel right. I'm still controlling it fairly well. Okay, that nice energy tank helps. The eye sees all. was never out before. Let's give that one a shot. This is an exclusive made just for the Genesis Mini by a homebrew enthusiast who decided Darius needed to be on Genesis. I kind of feel like Saramaro playing this on PC Engine, except not. And I just missed everything.
This version seems pretty good to me. Got no complaints. And since Tetris is one of the most rare Genesis games of all time, let's do that too. Well, what did you expect? It's Tetris. A no frills, bare bones, basic as hell version of Tetris. But ironically, there are only about 10 copies of this game in the entire world because Sega did not have the license they thought they had so all of these were supposed to have been recalled and destroyed, but a few of them managed to slip out to the public anyway. A few. Not many. Which is why it's so rare that it's a big deal just to have it on here. I kind of stacked myself up into a corner there. and more talking than playing, that's the problem. Let's bring this stack back down. That's a little more like it. I think we can work with that. Speed picked up. Weird choices of background graphics. All right, it works. Good enough. Well, I can't say I'm noticing any lag problems. Your mileage may vary, but if there is sound lag, I'm not feeling it, I'm not seeing it. I'm sure it's there, and I'm sure the people who've measured it know it's real, but I just played four games and I have no complaints about any of the four that I played. The box, however, the condition of the box, yeah, I'm still getting a replacement on that, because that's terrible. <laughs>